Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all our speakers. We are now going to move swiftly to our keynote address. Our keynote address is going to be delivered by our keynote speaker, who I would like to introduce in depth. We have already introduced him at the beginning of the program, but I would like to welcome him on stage to deliver the keynote address. Just to just to state to the timekeeper and to the audience so that our speaker doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like our speaker is defying the time, the five minute time limit does not apply to the keynote address. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our keynote speaker who is the man behind the vision that we are all, the vision bearer of this vision that we are all supporting. He is the founder of of the Melani Academy. He's a professional speaker and he's the author of the book titled The Trip 2031, You Are in Trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the man of the moment, Mr. Mbomeni Similani. Dumelan Sangonan. Is everybody okay? Thank you. It's a big day for me. Uh, before we go straight to the presentation, I want to say thank you, everyone who came here. The process of you going to Vic and Pay looking for those tickets, the effort, you who purchased a ticket online. You click and put your pin there because of you didn't trust the system, you were trusting me. The many stems on, on internet, but you were able to put your pin and purchase your tickets because you trust me. That means my reputation, I have to hold it like this. Those who just came in now, you came just right on time. Yeah. <laughs> just came right on time. Uh, sleep this night. Sleep this night. Emotions, mental, psychological, everything. It's just a traffic. It's just a traffic, but we will get into that. Uh, it was not easy. If so much that had to happen, so much had to happen to make this day to be possible. So I really appreciate for everyone who came here. I really appreciate. And I promise you the best. I really promise you the best. <clears throat> to the speakers, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is a great day for me. And you are here for the book and more. So in order for you to understand what's inside the book, so that when you read the book, you get to understand that what am I trying to say here or what am I saying? So I'm going to take you inside all the book. How did I come up with the book? So everything here, the pictures and everything and where I come from and all, everything, the tools and tips, so that you understand when I say, in education, there's gaps, and I say I'm giving you tools, I'm giving you tips, so that you understand what am I talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to master your game. I've mastered my game. I've mastered my game. When I say I've mastered my game, doesn't mean you don't have mistakes. You are a human being, but you have to master the game. Even Mason Ronaldo, they still miss a penalty, but they are masters. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take you back first where we come from. And I know you're asking yourself, people are saying, did you write the book? Yes, I wrote it. I wrote it. The one I wrote it. Wait by wait. Wait, wait by wait. I read that book seven times or eight times. I, mean, I don't know how many times I read it. I don't know how many times, 22,000 words then. Wait by wait. So I want to take you through where I come from, where it started. Because I was a student as well, then I became a teacher. But this is my primary school. Let me start by my name because I ask people right now. I wish Melan Mbongen. So Mbongen is my name. That's my first name, my first name given by my parents. Similan is my second name. But one of the reasons why I shifted from my name, not because of a problem. Every time my mother has a problem, she says, Mbongen. When everything is fine, she's like, my son. I was like, hey, that's me. I said, I am. 
Even my sister, she's here. Where is she? There she go. That's my sister. <laughs> no, no, when you see it, see me, you'll see it. <laughs> so every time, you know, when well, it's Braga, Braga, but there's a problem. Mom, you know, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, hey, this name is not too much. Yeah. Even in personal relationship, you know, they call you Hanipi. When there's a problem, you say, Mom, you ha, ha, ha. I'm like, hey, no, 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 no. So now, so, <laughs> but at least on campus, they were calling me so nice. Like, hey, Mom, I'm like, hi. Hey, Mom, <laughs> It was so nice. I said, hey, let me shift. Let me shift away from my name. Okay, so that is it. So I started my primary school in Pimville in Soweto. That's where I went, my primary school. So grade one to grade seven, the only one grade I did in KZN. But my primary school was based in Pimville. Then I went to KZN to start my high school. I went to East Kansas High School. That's where I went to start my high school, grade eight to grade 12, in the rural areas. And when I got in the rural areas, that's when I started to realize, okay, sometimes life is very difficult there. I thought then Soweto was struggling in that school. But when I went to KZN, where we didn't have a roof, then I got to appreciate it. Ah, okay. Yeah. Then, when I was done with my matric, then I went to University of KZN, when University of KZN, that's where I started. I said, okay, I want to study BSc. But I wasn't quite sure that doctor of becoming a geological scientist. Geological scientist, you study with rocks. You start with rocks, biology, it was method of medical. So I was like, study of rocks. When I got there, remember how we apply, we're from rulers. There's no internet, there's nothing. You only see a, pro a prospector, you say, okay, I want to be this. They give you nice pictures, then yeah. you apply. So I apply. When I got there, first practical, they gave us a rock, and then we have to study this. I said, ah, um, I don't know where it is. <laughs> this thing will change my life. The rock. Ah, never. I look at this rock I every day, every week in this rock. I said, ah, no, the only time I know a rock is something that we pick it up, it's a toy toy for us. I said, that's what we use. So I was like, ah, no way. So I studied there two years, and then Dropped out, changed, and I came to Johannesburg. Next slide, please. Then I came to Johannesburg. When I came to Johannesburg, and that's when I realized, what is it that I want to be? So I wanted to understand. I said, I want, I want to run things by myself. But I said, I needed to understand the finance, the economics, and everything, just to be, uh, to be well equipped. That's when I went to University uh, of Johannesburg. That's when I studied accounting. Not because I wanted to be an accountant, but because I wanted to understand anything about finance, economics, and all that. So that is why even today when I when speak economics, I understand very my story. In terms of finances, I know very my story. Numbers, I understand my story because you have to be a master in your game. So you have to make sure that you are a master in your game. So I had to make sure that I have to master my game. Okay, may I have the next slide, please? And then, so when I went to University of Johannesburg, that's when I started my first day. First year, second year, my third year. Probably not in okay. All right, but I'll put tea. All right, so I did my first year in accounting, second year, third year. So in my third year, as I was doing accounting, there was accounting, finance, all that. But now, in one of the subjects I did in my first year, there was something called statistics. Statistics is like numbers, like maths. So that's the only subject where my first time I got a distinction. First time. I never got a distinction in maths. But that's the only time I got a distinction. That's the only thing I had in my life. So I, I said, okay, fine. And I applied for being a tutor. And then the opportunity, Mr. Nyelisan, which I also mentioned in the book, in the front here, I said, I thank him the opportunity to give. He said, no, you're good in numbers. So he gave me the opportunity. Then I was able to have a class. Then I started tutoring. When I started tutoring, now we have in Bristol, Johannesburg. Then I was given an office. Then written my name outside. Wow. All right. Rural. <laughs> University of Johannesburg. I have a class. I have an office. Written my name. Psychological. What's happening now? Confidence goes up. Yeah. I'm the man, I'm the man. Yeah. All right, here we go now. We've got a class, we've got a class, everything is going well. So then when I, I have consultation times. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> consultation. I would enjoy, when are you available for that? And I was always free. Nah, check me out. And I was always free. Nah, maybe. Yeah, it was nice. All right, then they came. So this moment, this moment it happened. I'm in my tutoring room now. This is me sitting here. There's a table here. So there were a group of students, different color, different uh, skin race. It's white, black, Indian, and then also black people on this side. So it was a table, it's consultation time. They were asking me questions now. So I'm assisting now, so they started to stand. So I'm like that, and as I'm, I'm, I'm assisting them, and in my mind, I'm asking myself, what is it? Look at myself, because those are things that happen. I'm looking at myself, I'm looking at the skin color of these people. I'm like, wow. So am I really teaching white people? Really teaching Indian people, African people from DFC, all these people, and I'm asking myself, and they're listening to me, and I'm able to explain in English the content of my expertise. I'm able to pass the message. Oof. 
that really gave him confidence. But they were so happy. Everyone was so happy. And when they left, and when I got home later, I asked myself, how did that happen? How? And I got one moment. I said, the reason why they listened to me is this. Talent does not recognize skin color. Yeah. Talent, your skills, does not recognize the skin color. You're not talented because you're white or Indian or Indian race. You are not disadvantaged because of your skin color. Just be aware of those things. But talent cannot recognize that. That's what you should know. Only a human being knows your skin color. So don't confuse talent and the next human being. Now, it's going well. I mean that session. This side, on the other side, the same lesson. This side. There were ladies as well this side. As they were asking me questions, there was this one busy asking questions as well. And I'm explaining. Hey, but when I saw this this lady, and I normally know many, uh, what do you call this? The cute cats. Yeah. Hey, there was this lady asking me, pointing fingers. Those nails in my first time, I've never seen something like that. I didn't know there was nails. I'm like, what kind of nails are these? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this one is so different, this tree. And I looked at her. Uh, there was a time when I said four times two, she said eight. I said, nice. And I looked at her. And then she started smiling. I said, then I was able to look at her. I'm like, hey. Ah, this one is different. I was like, ah, this is not a cheese girl, this one. There's something different about this lady. I, after explaining, they left, and then she remained behind. She said, ah, Mr. Smith, may I please have a second minute? What's your problem? Can I please get more lessons of this? And I said, no, 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 sis. I've never even seen you. She said, no, I'm always busy. I'm always busy because of my work and all that. I said, oh, okay, no problem. Then she called me to confirm. She said, no, she'll even pay me extra and all those things. But then when I left, I told my roommate that I'm okay, Donna, there's this lady coming. She's very different. But then, what happened on Monday when she came? She brought lunch and sweet, and then she said, no, I forgot your lunch. She said, I'm going to bring lunch and pay. She said, no, let's go to a student center and buy something. Hey, I said, let's go. As I was walking from that office, going to the student center, listen, I was walking like a Nigerian player called Osime, like this. <laughs> like this. I was walking confident like soccer players, like this. Like, but everyone was looking at me, but it's my is with this lady. So I found that good they know her. But I'm saying, I wonder who's this lady? Who's this lady? Who's this lady? But then after then some weeks and times it went on. Then my roommate found out, no, I know the lady. Let me show you on tweet. Who's this lady? I look at the tweet. Then later that day, afternoon, Friday, he said, that was eight days we get the TV. And there was a show called Intersection of SFP2. He said, there she is. Huh? I said, ah, no, ma'am. He said, no, look at SFP2 on that side. It's your TV. She's doing that as well. And then there was another show on, on Isibar, something like that. She got a character there. Then I got myself, I said, oh. So I'm teaching a celebrity. I said, yeah. But now here's the thing that happened. When I looked at that in my mind, I'm like, the character she was playing on Isibar, no one watching Isibar, she played a character called C. And the real name is Zinke Mabe. So I'm teaching her, I'm like, wow. So I'm teaching celebrities as well. Confidence goes up now. Confidence now goes up. Then I got to understand again that talent does not care about those things. Yeah. If you're good, you're good. Yeah. If you're good, you are good. So that's what happens. That's when I said no. And my student, they said to me, I must do a teaching or become a lecturer. That's when I said, no, let me go to teaching. And that's when I started joining the profession. When I started joining the profession, I started my PGC at that time I completed and I said, no, let me go. I want to make change. That's when the first school that gave me an opportunity at the time, that's when my life and the magic happened. It was since I covered school. Here in Seoul. And that's where the magic happened. Thank you so much again, sister. And I swear to you. <laughs> if there's a, if, you know, Peter Msenam always says, he's not only in Sandam, but Sandam but Sandowns gave me a platform to be Peter Msenam. That school gave me a platform. That was my first. That's where the magic in every. If I had to remove my life, then there's no book. Yeah, there yeah, it, it happened. So it was a very interesting thing. So what happens is, and that's when I started. Um, okay, I will guide you in terms of the start. Can you please go back to the first one and go back, go back? Yeah, yeah, I know. This one. So this is where it starts. <clears throat> I want to talk about giving you tips in terms of mathematics and science and competition. So first things first is how do you become a super teacher? Because I spoke about it in the book. In order for you to become a super teacher, what is a super teacher? A super teacher is a person who takes calculated risks for the benefits of the learners, the school, and the community. Yes. 
Let me define again a super teacher, which he said, I said in the book, I said, you have to become a super teacher, which I became a super teacher. You have to be a person who takes calculated risk for the benefits of the learners, the school, the community. That's the super teacher. How do you become a super teacher? Your instinct will tell you that this decision is correct. Regardless of what is written down, you will follow instinct. Would, and I hear what you're saying, but this one, I'm right, for the kids and the school and the community. That's the super teacher. And let me tell you, becoming a super teacher must be prepared for controversial. You are very controversial when you are a teacher because they will tell you to go this direction. But you have to believe in yourself, just like I did when I was writing a book. Do you think everyone believed that I'm going to write a book? Not everyone came here today because of the were like, ah, no. You see what I mean? So that, that's how it works. That's a super teacher. So you have to be like that. I said, all right, sure. So what's happening now, I said, first things first, I'm going to just highlight maths and science. There's a lot of things, but it's in the book. So let me tell you one of the tips that I used to do and apply. And when we have to come to winning, how did I win in maths and science with limited resources? How did I win that? I have Tato here, who was part of the vision. I met Tato. Tato is here. I met Tato in grade five. Today, Tato is doing first year in university. If I'm lying, he knows he's here. Yeah. He's here. <laughs> he so what is it that I did? I looked at, let me tell you what, now I'm sharing the secret, isn't it? How was I winning against other schools? Let me share now, just a tip. I always knew when it comes to school, if you are writing a competition, let me tell you, I wrote there, go back, no, I'll tell you when to move. Right, I've got, I said tips for Quantan one, two, three schools, then. Yeah. All right, parents, your parents. Schools are divided as public school and private school. In the public school, you divide it in quantiles. There's quantile one, two, three, four, five. So you must know, in quantile one, two, three, these are more like your poor schools, poor, very poor, average. The circumstances of here are not the same as these ones. So four and five, this is more like your Sentin Primary School. You know those kind of schools like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the situation. I just, I'm just gonna use Sentin Primary School. Yeah. For yeah, and then it's us. So I always knew what we are here. So you must know the circumstances of your school where you are. Mm. Right. So I knew that when I'm here, I'm not working here. Yeah. So what I do, ne? Psychologically, we got students here. When we have to write, what I used to do with our time. So what I would do, I know, if you're writing maths and science, I prepare them even psychological. If you're going to write it, what you give me a certain name school, in this name I don't know the building, I Google the school, I show them who is the school. And what I do, in the preparation, so I invest in the preparation, not on the day of the activity. So I always knew, with, ah, the opposition, we will fix, we will put more investment on the day of the event. I have to prepare. So what I used to do, I take the boys, the time to the girls, we go to the school and see, they wake up, we go and buy them. So I, I don't want them the next day, they want to take pictures. So they are used to the school, they are just confident. And I make sure I prepare them with this thing. Eh? It's different race, it's different this, this is what, but everything, we're gonna be here, we're right here. So they are well focused and prepare for them psychologically. Why do you do that? It's like now, you cannot take Bafana Bafana to play against Argentina. There's Messi there. You have to prepare them psychologically because they want to take photos of Messi instead of marking him. So it's the same thing that they do. <laughs> That's how it went. So prepare them. So I will take them through the grill. Through the grill, I will take them there as well. Then when you go there, they are used to the play. So, and that's how it happened in terms of the winning. Same thing applies. Going to do science, if I'm saying that we are going there, we're going to write here, we're going to write here, we're going to write here, write here. I make sure I take them through there process, then psychologically they are feet. When they get there, they are calm. So when I know you're gonna come, you will come on that day, I'm like, ah, I'm not worried about you. My competition, I know I stuck here, four and five. These ones, I know this is where the competition comes in. So that's what, so one of the tips, so don't invest on the day of the TV. Also prepare on the preparation. You've never seen, even kids achieve the entire when they play. You know what they do? They do something called a pitch testing. They walk on the, while they're wearing their headset, they walk on the pitch before no one arrives. And then they go back and change and come back 20 minutes before. They walk on the pitch, they start warming up, coming down the nerves. And then when they come back, when you see them coming up the tunnel, they're like that. They come for the third time. So I used to do it there with the students. So psychologically, I prepare that. It's a cheap again. And there's more on the pitch. Right. <laughs> so now, and that has resulted in terms of winning. The struggle of winning. Yes, thank you. So those are one of the highlights. I won. And that's why even now I'm saying, if you give me a right opportunity to prepare, I can tell you even right now, I'm not scared of anything. I mastered a game, and at some point, I once wrote an email, and they said, no, bring three, I said, I'm coming, and they win all of them. So that's how confident I am. So those are the moments of times, maths and science, that was that. So next slide, please. That's a very special one, competition as well. 
That was Astro Science Quiz. That one, this is where, what they do there, they take public school, private school, everyone, they put all those big guns, put you together. So when we participated on this one, it was one of the very challenging competitions that they did, because we had to deal with the psychology of the learners. Because remember when you come from a class in the township, you find our learners, they don't even have Jesus. When they go there to go to school, you find them wearing big blazers, head boy, and they are tall, and the race is different, then they get nervous. So I had to prepare them psychologically a lot. I had to go to those schools, and I can't even remember what you wrote in that place. I, I didn't even know it myself. We went there the previous day to check the place, and I showed them. Even if we were writing in Kempton Park, I would drive and go to some, uh, uh, Kempton Park so that I showed them. But remember, you are a super teacher. If you want to say to a school, can I have one, two, three? It might not make sense to them. But here's what I'm saying. You are a super teacher. Switch on. Do it by yourself. Yeah. You are doing it for the school, but do it by yourself. Do it like that. So those, that's when they see that the fight starts coming in, the controversy comes up. You, you have to explain. So don't fight. I understand. It's not that they don't want to. They don't understand. But give them understanding. That's why I'm saying, I want to do this kind of session so that we understand. Let me tell you, in, in Soweto, we're very powerful. Yeah. We're very powerful. But let's make an understanding. So that's why I'm doing this kind of thing. I want to also to communicate to the teachers, to the principal, to the but everyone and the parents to understand. And most another thing, remember, if you're in point one, one, two, three, you know where those parents, the parents of those kids, they are working in, they are here in Chablani. Eh? Most of the parents. Let me tell you, they work Monday to Sunday. There's no time. You cannot give them a homework that requires parents instead. You must switch on the time. That's a tip again. I always knew what I mean. I'm in the school. The parents of my kids, they are not there. I must take responsibility. So the kind of activities that you give them is not the same as quantum four and five. So remember that. And it's not written in the policy. Wow. So you must be smart. It's not written in the policy. You must see it out. So that's what that it's that it, you improvise and then you can't say this but uh -uh, they can't they just they, remember they, they find a professor you know, to give us the curriculum there's nothing wrong with our curriculum South Africans someone who says that's why I look at you say no the system the education system is the problem uh -uh, I understand I understand that's why we've got gaps and that's why people they fight against the department of education or against the education system of the country and anywhere else it's because of we don't know how to improvise that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Picking up gaps. When say let's unpack gaps. Next slide, please. Now you participate. Now if life is growing, you participate in the competitions. I said to you, participate so that you can learn how to win. And when you win, you attract big guns. You associate yourself. And even when you win, you know what happens? You even get closer to sponsors and all that. But if you're losing, it's gonna be difficult. The only organization in life that I know that gets sponsors even if they lose. Ish. It's case achieved. <laughs> I know that team. I know. Even if it's losing, people they like it there. Yeah. I saw Nike moving away from from case achieved last time, and then you know there was a space here. Now they are sponsored by I think Kappa, eh? You know those guys that sit like this that logo, eh? yeah. But when they heard that Nike is no longer there, I saw those guys turning around with Tom, who born the Chiefs that never spot. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so that's the only one. So what's happening now, let's go back. So what's happening now, there will be in St. John, Houghton. That's a school, the private school, top school. So how did we met? Teachers learn to network. During the competition, why you have to win? Because when you write your cluster competition, you are here. But as you progress, that's why I was not worried sometimes whether I win or lose. I participated at the highest level. You go to provincial, that's when you are mixed. Why the kids are competing? Ah, uh -uh, as teachers, don't fight network make relationships it's a competition but it's not the actual competition does it make sense so you network then i was able to go to my student and to to the to st john and when i told him you know my kids have never seen the laboratory how but we're in a science competition go no we've never we they only see it on on the youtube and all that but they're able to win so that's when it started being interested hey we want to know more. they invited me so that's that was the st john that's that um, we can do, yeah, all right, quickly that one. Look at the, there are two pictures, different school and different school. So there, exactly, that's the classroom designer. So what happened is there, I was trying to improvise. That was my small laptop then, that was my small laptop. So we had a situation, I wanted to show them something, and things were not working out. Guess what happened, I wanna show you, I said to you, I wanna show you how to win with limited resources I need. You don't complain, you are a simple teacher, eh? All right, so what happened there? So I had that picture. I was like, right, even my phone was clear. I think it was G2. Mm. But it did work. 
because it just yeah. So that's what I did. I said, all right, how can I use computer in the school? We don't have computers. We don't have computers. But if you think you go to the office and ask the school to buy a computer, office, but we don't have that budget. But you are a super teacher. You have to think. You know what I did there? And I started googling H HP, Acer, all those companies. I didn't think so. Then I found Acer. Acer and it was, and I saw a local Paris. Acer and Paris. I was like, okay. I was curious. I went to Orlando. I went to Orlando. I said, okay. Uh, I'm looking for a sponsor. I said, no, I'm looking for a sponsor. Do you do you give computer? I see this case. Do they give up computer? No. And then I said to them, this guy said, what is it that you want? I explained to him that situation. He said to me, no, listen, what are you going to do? We're going to offer your kids. Here, we've got a learning center here. Yeah, we've we, we got a learning center. We're going to teach your 60 kids every week, three times a week. And then you can bring them here. They start to learn. And then in that case, we didn't have to buy computers. I just had to take them there. And problem one, solve which with the next slide please that's where we are orlando now i'm giving information i said we share information eh? yeah. if you go there to orlando stadium it's not just the stadium inside there there are classes that they're taking there and you won't pay but here's the challenge that you're going to have how did i resolve, how did i resolve it they said to me okay now you didn't transport the kids to come there i said no send me an, an email of confirmation that my kids will go in i got them emails what do you do here? Toyota. <laughs> I have this, da 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 da. And he said, it's a deal. They transport the kids. The school now doesn't have money to pay for that. Toyota comes. You see now what I mean? Build relationship. Don't say you're asking for money. They have resources, but you just have to be smart with them. Also explain to them, be specific. What is it that you need? They will help you. That's how we go. Right. Next slide, please. What happens now? We have interesting stories. Now we are winning. We've got maths and science. We're learning technology. We're not buying computers. We're getting there. And then now, obviously, there are some newspapers who love positive news. That's what happens now. You get media recognition now. They appreciate your stories. They want you to share the stories. Don't share your stories from those newspapers. I was like, I was sharing my story. Today, where's those stories? In the book. Next slide, please. Now, more different newspapers. They want to share. They want to know. They want to know the story. Let's go. The next slide, please. It's different readers every month. They want to know your story. Because why? They want to, because they're interested in the story. They want to share with the community. Stories. Next slide, please. Thank you. And then we stop here. As you can see, there. this is that. And that's now on radio. They called us today. They wanted to talk. They gave us 10 slots. How do we win? Because there was a competition going on on top there. Now I brought that there. Tab. As Tab was taught. And now he's, he's doing first day grades. And he's from Ketis. He went to Ketis. And that's Tab. You know how Tab would go to Ketis and Tan? I didn't know about Ketis. Ketis, but I didn't know about Ketis at the time. So it was a competition. And another thing is a teacher. You must set up, try to compete all the time. So I, I always look, I search competition. And there was a competition happening. All find the vents and Katie's. And when we got there, that nice competition. So Tab got a total. And he wrote another thing, they wrote total on that day. So they wanted one, they said, just put two Tab. Then they said to me, who's your teacher? Then they called me. They said, no, you know, we want to start. They will want this land. I said, no, but we don't have money. Here. But no, we offer this thing. Don't ask for free. All those things. And that's when it opened. I said, no, I've got more. <laughs> and that's when they came. Yeah, that's when they came. Then I got Tato. Tato is applied now. Tato to said, no, but they won't take me to Katie's. You know what I did? Hey, you are a simple teacher. I risk, guys. I risk. I cheated the system, but for the best. Tato is not applied to Katie's. I said, Tato, shh. You write the test. Eh? You are going to beat them all, but I'm, I know. Guess what Tato did? He delivered the result. And that's Tato. That's Tato. That's Tato. You are a young boy that time. You see now what happened. So that is when we're giving chips on the radio, they tell them, that's it. May I have next slide, please? Uh, now I'm called by Switch TV as well to give what? Tips. So the tips have been following me. Share, share the tips, share the tips, share the tips. That's what has been happening. Next slide, please. There we go. Boom. Now that's Daily Sun. They are looking for what now? The tips. And who's that little boy in the red now? Straight suit. That's Tato. Where's Tato now? That's Tato. <laughs> that's the big man. And that's Tato as well. So we're winning, winning. 
So all that story, the storytelling that has been following me, the storytelling of how do you win with limited resources. And the nice part what I like, what they call me, oh, okay, we saw the news, can we come, when they come to the school, ah, you are here, Gandhi. But I don't worry, we don't want to look like our problems when we go and compete. Yeah. Ah, we don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> all right, next slide, please. Here we go. In a school, I decided to ask the office, I said, I want to do mathematics awards. I wanted to award the learners. I didn't know what I was doing, but I'm a super teacher. I'll find a way. So I was just curious. I said, this kid, there was one boy said to me, I said, what's your favorite car, boy? He said, I love GTI. I said, friend, I said, yeah. When I grow up, I want GTI. I said, have you been to GTI? He said, no. I said, in myself. I've never. <laughs> <laughs> ah, crazy as I am. I went to VW. Coco. No, later I went to Coco. And I don't follow procedure, eh? when I'm going to success. You know why I don't follow procedure when I'm going to success? It's because when problems, they come to me, they don't follow procedure. I don't follow a procedure when I'm working on my success. Because when the problem rises from the top and coming here to me, uh, they don't ask for procedure. So why must I smile with problems? Never. And that is why even you, even business are insane. Even on Sunday, sell. You must sell. Even if you are selling insurance, sell insurance. I've had people, no, no, I'm busy Sunday. Don't call me this time. You cannot sell me insurance to finance. Listen, when you die, you don't die during office hours. You die in time. <laughs> so if you are selling insurance, sell insurance. If you're looking for success, look for it any time. Because let me tell you, when your problem comes to you, they don't come during office hours. No, they don't. So why you make arrangement with success? Just go for it. That's how it works. So that's when I went to Vita. We spoke for about five minutes. Natasha was here. I told you this story. This is not just what I want. It took five minutes. And remember, when you have to speak, you have to know how to speak. Yeah. It's very important to know how to communicate. Yeah. So this position has put me to know how to be a creative writer, how to be a creative speaker. So I had to speak within that five minutes. Boom, the meeting was successful. He said, no, come. <laughs> I didn't believe that. I only asked for one car or two cars. At the time when we were at school, I'm the ones doing maths awards, man. I'm asked to slot them. As I'm announcing there, I'm looking at me. Jesus, is she gonna come? And I only saw a signal from a general director. Peter, five seven. That's here. Two. I said, I said, two. Four, no. <laughs> then they were there. It was a nice show for us. Yeah. We got there, inside. Even myself, it was the first time. I was there, inside. Ari Natasha, please open the, the sunroom. I said, no, you can open it. I said, no problem, my breast. Yay. Using my left hand, and then I use my right hand to wave. <laughs> on board, Natasha. And that's how it works. So let's move to the next slide. So improvise. Who's that now? The next day, so I, have a super teacher. I take risk. Yeah. And when you take risk, ladies and gentlemen, don't share your stories too much. Because the next person you tell you, I want to dream. That's me. I had my learner speak about hotel, about what? I said, why, why do you have hotel? I said, no, when I grow up, I want to go to a hotel. I said, why do you have to wait when you grow up? I now write the arrow means to the hotel and wait till I target all of them in Sentin. I Google all the hotels in Sentin. It was market and all the hotels. And I wrote about 15 images. Something that got they responded. They said, come. So with my learners there, as you can see, we were offered them experience. We ate there for free. We stayed there for free. Because why? I was rewarding the students that we did well in my subject at that time. And if you can see there, those are the girls. I wanted girls to understand that your studies can give an opportunity. Not a matter <laughs> It was important for me to instill that to the young age. When Santin got this, uh, Santin said, You can car. I don't need a car to take them. I called the Toyota. I met a very good gentleman called James. That's the guy. I told him the story. I said, I want first class in James. He said, No, I don't want. He said, Have you seen the money? Hey, I saw a fortune. Well. Just right there. There in Township, they picked us up there. We went to Cali. Imagine, in a fortune, it's my first time, Linda. <laughs> when they, we were there, we prayed, we ate, 
Now, first time even eating that egg, I said, what's the name of this egg? They said, omelette. I said, yeah, I eat there. So we enjoy now. We enjoy. That's how, that was great was there. So I took them there. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't have any connection. My learners, through their education, connected me to the world to where and the world. Next slide, please. Now we're in something. Born again. Next day, now please this day. I'm not going to tell you where I'm going. Uh, I said, Villa Gazi Street. We got an opportunity to start homes. They said, no, come and enjoy. Reward your street. I'm now taking different groups. Do I have a car? No. Where do I go? Toyota now. You see now what happened? Told them the story, said, not a problem. They said, how many learners? I said, no, three. I got a moment. It needs to be class. James said to me, no. Okay, is he here today? James, are you? Not yet. Okay. In his absence, he gave me that car. I, I can't even remember even the name. But all I know, I was sitting there. <laughs> they came with those cars. Nice moment. You see what happens now? Becoming a super teacher because you take risk. I didn't tell anyone about this, but I thought about it a long time ago. But had I told someone, you're like, ah, Mara, who are you? Who are you? So that confidence. Next slide, please. This is what happens now. What am I thinking? See, student exchange program. It's just a name. I don't know it. I just created it. I said, I want to take this from here in Soweto to KZN. KZN Rural to come this side. I don't have money. The school doesn't have money. But I will do it. And I will find a way. Road to that school then. Said I want the kids, they said yes. I told the principal, he said, he said, I said, first things first, super teacher, just if you explain your plan, just say, no, just approve it. I will take off the rest, including pay everything. I didn't have anything, but it succeeded. Then, after then, when that program was done, what do I do? I wrote to where now, Toyota. I said, I want to take this to this side, and this one to come this side, so that they can appreciate the life, because I saw how the work area is. And then the trip was approved. They gave me the quantum, they gave me the kids. What did I do? I took 25 students. It was a quantum, it was a parent. Build a good relationship with parents if you're a teacher. Because of eventually they will also help you. When I had a quantum, they said the parent raised their hand said, Now I'll come with my car. So we had a car. There was another teacher with a friend that said, Now I'll come with my car. So all of that there was there. Where's Tato? Tato is there and all these things. <laughs> it's there as well. So what I did, we took the students who play football, I took maths, I took netball. Together, we went there. Maths, football, netball, we were there. Did we pay anything? No. But had I told you about this before, someone would say, I know what I have to do. That's how it went. Don't think according to your affordability. Use your imagination. And that's why sometimes, don't be ashamed of Googling a house that costs four million while you've got 20 rand in your bank and say, this one is reasonable. <laughs> Just Google your house, four million houses. Like, no, it's reasonable. <laughs> Even if you've got 20 rand in your pocket, it's fine. That's it. Next slide, please. Here we go. Orlando Stadium. What's happening there? I've got students who like football. These guys are so much passionate in terms of football. I said, if you want to become super player, I said, yeah. I said, when you, when you play football, no smoking, no drinking, no everything. But I said to them, I want to show you the future. If you follow football, who you will be? I wrote to PSL. PSL, I went with them. After that, they said to me, no. I said, I'm looking for tickets to access the studio. And then they said, PSL, no, go back to Orlando Pirates because you want the game like this. I said, yeah. And then Orlando Pirates, what did they do? They gave me an opportunity. Orlando Pirates, they said, no, it's OK. They gave me 15 tickets. They gave us VIP parking from that day the car. So they said, all right, you can take your shot for these boys. I said to them, I want you to see if you become a professional. Paris gave us access to go behind and meet the players. And for the first time for Orlando, that was the first and the last time I packed in the VIP area. Wow. First time. First time I packed there. But how did we transport them again? For yours. <laughs> because I write to them like that. You see what I mean? You write. So that's what happened. So there, when we were in the VIP in the classes there, uh, you know, the boy said, I say it's boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We want to go there. <laughs> but that's how we ended up there. Before I even took photos of in the VIP in the classes there. 
Hey, I thought I was going to be on TV super sport, but why didn't I wait? Uh, but then I was there. Next slide, please. Now what's happening? You are growing. Doors are op opening up. How then provincial? What part? They were looking for mass teachers and they're doing this, they're looking to, during COVID, they want to do online lessons and all that. They needed the good and best teachers at the time. I didn't know about this opportunity. Guess who called me, who recommended me? Alan Gray. When they called Alan Gray, the housing provincial looking for teachers for this program, they called Alan Gray. They were looking for that. And what's happening? How did I meet Alan Gray? Because I was collecting the forms. I didn't know about Alan Gray. I was collecting the forms. The student telling me it was scholarship, it was scholarship, it was scholarship, it was scholarship. And I collected the forms and I took them there, different schools. I didn't know what I was doing because I was giving them about, I've never heard of grade six, you know, offers and something like that. I took them to St. T. I went there and then submitted. And then the stage was, she said, these are all the learners. I said, no, these are from different schools. Then she was impressed. Then she gave me a card off with the Keller. She said, no, this is our director. You must call me and just. I sent Mr. Caleb an email on Sunday. I thought it was going to spell man. He replied on Sunday. Like, <laughs> because of the good relationship that we built, when the housing provisional called him looking for a teacher, and then he gave, called out my name, then I got, a call, and I got that opportunity. I saw Paul Kemper standing in front of me. I didn't know. I'm like, wow. Now I'm here. Next slide, please. That's how it looks like. Us behind the scene, and that's how it looked like. But it's their content as they were doing that. So now you see what happening. From that form that I was collecting for free, assisting the parents, the kids to, to apply and all that, taking them there, it opened another opportunity. I didn't know about Mr. Taylor. I didn't know about that, but I only saw that and then I did this and submitted because of why you want you are a super teacher. Next slide, please. That that was my classroom that I was giving in season nine. So I used, that was my class at that time. So I was recording myself because at that time I wanted to say I want to have a television show. So every time in that, and when you say when I have a television show, you cannot look for funders for a sample, they don't know you. So at that time I was like, no man, I think I want to teach everyone. So there, the Tato is always there. The Tato was always there, he's part of that. So as I was teaching, I wanted to record it just before TikTok. So I was doing that, I documented, I was submitting to different television, television. I was submitting, I was submitting and submitting to television. Remember, I don't know anyone, SABC or I don't know anyone, but I believe in myself, my content can go on TV. Because I saw myself as a TV, I didn't see myself as a president. I saw myself as a, I'm a teacher, I'm a student. I will teach, I want to teach the world. I didn't go to UJ and study and to teach Cezanne from school kids. I went to UJ to study because I want to teach the kids, the children of everyone. That's how we so that prepared me as well. Next slide, please. Right. And that's the inside. That is the inside, the journey. I try to summarize it. That's the journey. That's how storytelling. How did I come about? So when I know something, so that's why sometimes we start telling people, no, but the procedure say this is what the document. I look at you, I'm like, <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. That's not how it's done. That's not how it's I know the formula. I know exactly the formula for me. I know it. I know exactly. It's just sometimes you, you look. And like I said, you have to use your instinct. Teachers, you are asking yourself, maybe, how do I know? You can never have a super teacher's instinct if you went to the profession because you were looking for a job. Yeah. Yeah. If you were doing teaching because of the, the passion, your instinct will kick in. And let me tell you, they'll always guide you right. You will break the promises. They tell you this, you do the opposite. And then when you die, you say, you see, this is what I was trying to achieve. You have to have those things. But you must be prepared for controversial. If you are a super teacher, you're going to have controversial moment. Not everyone will go in your direction. But you just have to stick to it. You just have to stick to it. And you know exactly. I always knew exactly what I'm doing is it's correct. And that's it. It's a guideline, the policy. It doesn't tell us what to do. It's a guideline for us to do. A school is not a franchise. Education is not a franchise. Yeah. Why am I saying that? You go to KFC, you are told the procedure how to cook that chicken every day. 
You go to chicken digging, you are told exactly how to cook. Even you, and you, in a minute, you put your creativity, they say, no. It's a procedure, it's a franchise. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you must respect them. And that's why even there, even yourself, you say you want to place a franchise, they start checking you, they talk to you. No, you must understand. But these are different types of businesses. Franchise is how you operate. If you are this kind of a business person, not that they disrespect you, it's how you operate. But in schools, remember, you are managing Smelani, who's managing a human being. Smelani has emotions and psychological thinking. Who's managing a person who changes the emotion and psychology? So you cannot always apply the procedure. Understand that. It's, that's, the, that's how it works. So you need to understand everything. The manner of approach, the manner of communication. A school is not a, a franchise. You must apply not everything that is written there. It's everything there. You have to apply your creativity. Football, you can study the book of football. But they don't tell you 10 left, 10 right. That what Messi and Ronaldo are doing there. Yes, they understand, they listen to the coach. But it's time, when it's showtime, they do it. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna ask my team, the side, to come closer as we reach the moment of unveiling this amazing project. Come inside. <sighs> ask them to come inside. <laughs> Uh, ready? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. The book that we shed tears with this book, the book that has cost so much me emotionally and psychologically. If you're doing such projects, you are focused. You don't answer calls, you don't go back to people. You are here, like now I'm doing the event, someone will just tell you, ah, now didn't come because he didn't invite you. Those are things that you must expect, but it's not a waiting It's an event. You try by all means, but you understand people how they are. And then you must understand you're gonna lose relationships, friends, people, everyone else, because of doing what you wanna do. I've got so much scars in that, but I've got the front is beautiful. Which I more than anything, the lesson, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor, privilege for me to unveil the metric 2031 book that unpack the gaps, talks about the tools and tips because I want our country to become one of the best in education, which I will continue to make sure that I advocate for that. Ladies and gentlemen, hey! let's unveil the book.
We share tears, joy, success. What I want to, to tell you when it comes to chasing our dreams and success, success is very brutal to us. We love success, but success sometimes doesn't love us. We lose friendships, professional relationships because of success. I started thinking about this last year, not thinking about it, writing it. But thinking about it, it's been inside me. Mm. I've been very, I had to cut certain talks and stuff because I wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you take difficult decisions. Difficult decisions. You find a friend has lost a parent. But on that day, the editor says, I need you to submit. Sometimes you got a wife or husband, you're looking for success. There's something that you have to do you forget because of the very same success that you are chasing for your family. It's the one that also causes fight against the people that you love. Mm. We lose relationships. We lose the people that we love because of that. Success is very brutal. No matter what happens and no matter what it takes, never be scared of taking risks. Never be scared. The people who come to the front, it's not because of they are better than you. But you just need to be brave. And one thing I can tell you, don't fight to be better. Fight to be different. Great. You can never be better than anyone else. But it can be different. Because of as born the day you were born, you were given your difference. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of your difference. Use your advantage of your difference. A book has been done before. But there's no book like this. Yes. Because if it's written by me, because I'm different, not better than anyone else. Great. To the teachers, I really appreciate who came here, to this room, the colleagues, the friends, and the support that I got. I mean, it was amazing for me to see people I didn't even know. Okay, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Success is very something that is complicated, and one might know. You wanna, you are 30 years old or 40 years old. If you feel like you are old, you want to start your business, your project, you feel like you are late. You can start to do it today or tomorrow at any time. Why is that? You are not late. Because success has no closing date. Great. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the shop at the moment. You can take a photo of it. This is where you're going to find it. And the book, the first price of the book for you is the price. It is available from today, even here. The table that you used outside there in your registration, you will find it. You'll be able to purchase it there. The MC will also direct you as well. They will help you, the team as well, the different types of methods that we use but you can access it. More than anything, the fact that you came here, I'm not sure where it's going to travel. It's going to where she is. I know she was not expecting what I'm going to say. Huh? When I did this event, the first time when they sent me there, someone purchased the ticket after the time. Remember you're exposing yourself to the public. Mm -hmm. When I saw the ticket, I said, I'll never forget this time and this ticket. That was the first person who bought the ticket. I said, then I have to I really have to show I said, Lord, please take that ticket safe for me to be a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that they would, I'm not going to take the I'm not going to talk to the chair. And that day when I knew that she fetches the ticket, I know it's game time. Yeah. It's game time. And I knew that time. And ladies and gentlemen, Today, I want to say thank you. I think from now on, we can go to the next session to pass now, <coughs> whereby you can engage and talk and QA in question. But the, the MC, done a great job, will do everything. And thank you so much.
such a break after that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was very surreal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Similani, for taking us through your journey. Uh, it's not uh, just the lights and everything. Yeah, it's not the place of the club. You just took us through your journey and we felt like we were there with you as you journeyed. And yeah, thank you guys for supporting Mr. Similani up until this far. And yeah, Tato, nice to see you <laughs> all grown. Without any waste of time, we are running out of time a bit. I would like to quickly call upon stage the panel members.